and welcome to the uh, X Review. My name is Paul, and today we're going over Brass Eye, the uh, 2001 Peter Geddon special. Now, this was a fake news program where um, they would quite literally invent stuff up, and uh, all the celebrities who would go on there thinking that it was actually a genuine news program, and they would just have them. <laughs> so, um, Let's get this reaction going, shall we? These are our children. They skip down our streets, but the paedophile is waiting. <laughs> Take a look at this. What is it? Just a hillside? Look again. There's a child there, no more than a blue speck. But the fact is, if you show this picture to a paedophile, they'll actually try and attack it in an attempt to reach the child. Even our most drastic measures... So yeah, Gary Lineker fell for it. Last month, the notorious Paid pedophile millions of pounds of BBC's uh, to spend the taxpayer licence fee money and he actually fell for that. no further threat to children on Earth. But it was revealed that an eight-year-old boy was also placed on board by mistake <laughs> and is now trapped alone in space with the monster. A spokesman said... This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. Why can we no longer think of the British Isles without the word pedof in front of them? <laughs> Good evening. We're live tonight from the epicenter of Operation Daisy Bird. Welcome to ah. Peter Geddon. People like this are everywhere. That's why my own children are here with me. Good night, children. <laughs> They're safe tonight. Are yours? See, I remember when this came out originally, yeah. There was a over. massive amount of Every complaints. Every major stadium in the because country. A lot of people Please, thought it was a real news. We must have your children <laughs> safe in one of those by midnight. They're already filling up nicely, and that's the check-in area in Cardiff. And you can see clowns there fitting children with anti-paedophile canisters. Those canisters can be remotely activated if the child goes missing. They put off paedophiles by spraying the child with eight liters of pressurized sewerage. <laughs> We're after your help too. Security footage of a paedophile disguised as a school. He's been getting away with it in Sheffield for 12 years. Do you know him? Have you seen him? Please call. Yes, we must catch that man. He really is a shit. <laughs> but let's start with a look at how the beautiful. It reminds me of BBC News or BBC Par uh, Panorama at the moment. Victorian with all their fakeness. This man is having sex with a 10 year old girl. In our reconstruction, she's played by a 25 year old woman. The breasts are inaccurate, a child's breasts are small. The nipples much like those of a boy. But this isn't pedophilia. The girls are whore. Can I have the money now, please? In the 1950s, a national questionnaire explained exactly what a pedophile was. Each man in Britain was asked if he thought he was one. 92% said yes. But today, the number of children having sex with adults is beyond belief. If you define a child as anyone under 30, the figure is over 86%. So yeah, fake statistics, spreads like rife. all uh, news so programs do at the moment. We invited a 10-year-old boy into the room and we asked the man, are you attracted to this boy? And he said no. And you believed him? Yes. <laughs> Even though on that occasion he put his hand down the boy's trousers? He was trying to save the boy from a fly. We have become <laughs> Sounds like the Labour Party's excuses confused. <laughs> Dear sir, I am a paedophile Please can I have sex with this three year old girl Now that she's 21 No way So who is Jez North? In 1986, Jez North was convicted for multiple acts We believe his story is actually too upsetting to transmit We only do so tonight with that proviso So yeah I drew pictures of him and Back in the day when this came out there was His a massive explosion was on the uh, media with them going, Peter Fowler, Peter Fowler, and it, 
and there were paedophile witch hunts. People were being accused of being paedophiles like and so put on kind, trial by uh, media. Trial by media. And it's con and since and then, it's got worse and worse potatoes. and worse. The perfect and this program was basically showing... <laughs> This, By night, this program was basically showing the media what they were, and thunder. they didn't like it, so they demonised this program as much as they could. <laughs> so yeah, the media just demonised this program, along with the, the uh, complaints that were sent into Channel 4, in fact, so and... <laughs> She would only talk to us through her sister disguised as a plastic troll. <laughs> Fucking hell. She still can't really speak about it. We asked Kelly if she would mind demonstrating North's perversions. Someone who agrees to rub their breasts on television is clearly inexcusably disturbed. <laughs> but incredibly, it took the police another eight years to bring North to justice. At this house, on the 26th of March 1986, North was arrested. He received four life sentences to run Austin Tasseltine sequentially. Thanks, Austin. But even in prison, North's rastopedic impulses found new outlets. He was allowed to write articles for a magazine, edited by a man who at that time had a nine-year-old nephew with a nice pink arse and no hair on his balls. The orgy of sly-winking usury was only brought to an end by a stairwell nonce bashing, which left North brain-dead and quadraspazzed on a life glug. Jez North is released tomorrow. Can we be sure that pervert mechanics haven't built him one of these? <laughs> of course we can't, which is why your children could very soon be splatted by a roboplegic wrongcock. So yeah, this is just even going now, to show how much the media would just say a blatant lie just to this fill up think. the, uh, the country's schedule. country's leading authority on paedophiles, using Britain's best-loved heads... And I'm talking nonsense. <laughs> ...to broadcast paedophile facts. This is a crab, this... this has sex with kids to Dr. those Fox. most in danger <laughs> let's just get one thing straight the british army has never launched an offensive ha against and the six-year-old andy child. mcnab he wrote the uh, Marth, sas yeah, books no and offense. he fell for this as well no offense no offense no offense and no thanks and this cunt here is an mp how brazen and shameless is the modern paedophile well take a look at this card here what sort of sick <laughs> individual <laughs> Put things like this up in a telephone box. What sort of thing was going through Often Gary Lineker? Phones, but so too do Gary Lineker using fell for text it. message and yet slang. He goes around these on days edge, on the BBC pushing so his political bias and to he fell for this. Code for he's not exactly smart. I mean, he's a football player, so he's not going to be smart. Children from a shrub. DBL means dusky blonde Lulu. <laughs> and that's a male paedophile disguised as a lion. Baltimore. <laughs> This means literally, <laughs> I'm running at them now with my trousers down. Baltimore! This man is using clapping to describe a six-year-old child alone in a department store while her mother is distracted using a mobile telephone. Other paedophiles <laughs> in the area can now take advantage of this child by using this method of communication. Wadded and rammed, public support for anti-paedophile technology. The Singapore solution. A paedophile has an implant the size of a cashew nut in his rectum. These devices are triggered by the sound of children's voices. It hears those voices. It expands to the size of a 42-inch colour television set. <coughs> Bang! They fall to the ground, shrieking, and the children are safe. Good. Very good. Very good idea. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes. And a self-confessed <laughs> paedophile is confronted with what he is. You are a paedophile. You are a nonce. Mm. You are a perv. You're a slot badger. <laughs> You're a two-pin din plug. Mm. You're a bush dodger. You're a small beam regarder. You're an una bummer. Una bummer. You're a nut administrator. <laughs> You're a bent ref. You're the crazy world of Arthur Brown. <laughs> You're a fence foal. You're a free willy. 
You're a chimney bottler, you're a bunty man, you're chimney a shrub rocketeer. Yes, well, you know, you just mentioned some of the names that we have to put up with every day, and it's just another form of racism. See, that was a, obviously a joke, but in this day and age, you've got people who actually think that it's okay to stand up for the uh, pedos because it's a new type of sexuality that has to be protected. There should be a protected the group. Absolutely delivering not. Delivering justice under men who prey sex on our children. <laughs> men who have sacrificed the right to a life without pain. I know how they look. I know how they think. I was one, for Christ's sake. Ten years ago, I had designs on my own kids. I knew that one day, I might act on them. So to stop me, I shot myself in my own head. I'd killed the pedophile in me. Now, I do the same for society. Because these men have chosen the way of the animal. They don't deserve punishment. They deserve punishment. <laughs> pedophile starts next week on 4, straight after Pedophile Island. A hundred kids and an ex-offender on an island full of cameras. What's going to happen? <laughs> Still in the paddock, the web perverts who sell trousers to disguise erections in playgrounds. <laughs> well, I think it's an absolute disgrace that somebody should use the internet to market these trust me trousers. It makes it very difficult legally to try and pin them with the offence because it covers the fact that they're stimulated in the groin area. And paedophilia for laughs? Who wants a sweetie? Reformed abuser Fenton Beasley has a best-selling autobiography and now runs bus tours of his old haunts. You need have to do something for Uncle Beasley first. You have to lift up your skirt and show me your knickers. Why are they laughing? What's that? Hair? Hey, I don't like hair. Is he right to milk his perversion? When you have children of your own, you remember Uncle Beasy. And get him to undress by the window. Would you do that for me? <laughs> <laughs> only kidding, only kidding. <laughs> Obsessed by the American rap artist J.L. Bate. Self-styled king of new ass music, he's sold over 18 million records and dates girls as young as seven. Can you turn away from me? I'm happy because I can see you little white butt. He's the coolest, definitely. Bate claims he's been unfairly treated. Don't you think you should ask my dad, maybe? Why his dick was up my ass before I was even a baby? Sure, my bump was over the cervix. That's not a free hole for perv days. He fucked me anally, prenatally. I'm only doing unto them as he did unto me. But he's a paedophile. So? Like we care. One kid polishes my balls. He's living inside my diaper. I got two more in my trash. They put a windshield wiper. Objective, he tried to kiss you. No! Okay, Even <laughs> our own artists seem hell bent on depravativity. Pseudophotographs. Yeah. Composite images. Yes. Which can be dangerous. They can be. They become indecent by virtue of the way in which they've been um, altered. Right. <laughs> yeah. Work in progress by an art collective, unhappy, disgusting, wow. Mm. A, a nude woman's body, mm. a little girl's head. Now, I, I did actually find that quite uh, sexually <laughs> arousing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> he well, doesn't even know what to say because he's actually did, genuine. Not he, that he's there. Why not? <laughs> he's Cause there he's because he was invited. Your body is not one of the real. <laughs> <laughs> Ian did trusts about last night. <laughs> mm. no, in my view, that would be... That's indecent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, indecent or not? No. If, if this were the eyes of a child... No. What about... The let's, let's just put the, the whole head. head on, yeah? What I'm saying is you put that head on there, then yes, it would be indecent. <laughs> OK. And... Uh, just do that. Oh God, my will, will the artist mind? This <laughs> <laughs> made me quite angry, didn't it? <laughs> right? There. That is an indecent image, is it? Yes. Now, why are no paedophiles black? It's a it's a I'm going to have to pause this in a moment. One second. 
and you leave the kids alone. Or else. <laughs> now, a quick recap for you. Pedophiles, crabs, simple. Hold that thought. Mm. For you. Your favorite. Get me out of here! Yeah, just a, just a second. Oh, I'll pause just in a second. But we've been this invaded a, a by members of the militant paedophile organization, Millie P. P. Like, this, this is their leader, Gerard Cho. Now listen. Right, I'm going to pause it here because the man in the stocks is none other than Simon Pegg. This was his first television appearance. So, before all of Mission Impossible movies and Star Trek movies and even his own movies, uh, Shaun of the Dead, and even his own TV show, uh, Spaced, this, this was his first television appearance in Brass Eye as a pedo in charge of Millie Peed. In a second, you've broken in here demanding you to have your say on live television. What? Tell us what you believe. What? What do you believe? I, I believe that intergenerational sex is is appropriate within love. Sex with children. Relation. Yes. Stop right there. Could you come on. <laughs> well, okay. That's my son Johnny. All right. Have a look at him. Now, are you prepared to tell me you want to have sex with my son? No. You're ashamed, I, aren't you? No, I'm not ashamed. All right, then tell me you want to have sex with my son. I don't. Why not? I don't. I don't fancy him. <laughs> what do you mean? I just don't. I don't find him attractive. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good. Actually, you, you're prepared to tell uh, the father of a six-year-old that you want to have sex with him on live television. I didn't. Yeah, effectively, you did. Did. you did. You did. So this, one this is, did, didn't he? yet again, how, yes, I'm, how I mean, the media just spin so things on yeah. the fly. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> you did. Online <laughs> games. Why me? The, the latest menace. It's absolutely revolting. To require urgent warnings. Shit from expert communicators right so if you could take that and hold that I'm this guy here camera. he was even an itv Hand news reporter dock, a child's game on the internet fell for it. but look again an online pedophile has converted that eye to work as a webcam to look at the child player <laughs> sometimes the child can glimpse the molester in that he was an anchor man on the news and he fell and for this wearing a t-shirt like this the online paedophile can disguise himself as a child. So the child thinks it's playing with another child. <laughs> it's called a hoax game. A hidden online interaction. They all fell for system. it. So they don't get police it. have sent us these pictures. This man has plugged his groin into his computer to get sexual pleasure from the actions of a child playing with Pantu. So every time you kids tickle Panto, the paedophile gets his rocks off. We believe that paedophiles are using an area of internet the size of Ireland. <laughs> and through this, they can control keyboards. Online paedophiles <laughs> actually make your keyboard release toxic vapors that make you suggestible. <laughs> you know, I must say, I, I actually feel more suggestible, and that was just with one sniff. Host games can cause serious damage. One child was trapped online for a whole night and according to a psychiatric report came away with the jaded listless sexual appetite of a 60 year old colonel. <laughs> now here are the warning signs. See this is done in the days be in before uh, broadband upset, was out. Do they smell odd? It didn't exist at this point. Question, but it was all uh, dial up at this child point smell like hammers. So come on experts, why is no one telling us about this stuff? There's a kid in Canada who's gone almost completely 2D and no one's doing anything about it. Well, it has been a great mm. night, hasn't it? It certainly has, Chris. Two million children now safe in our stadiums. A Peter Fahl was attacked in his car this evening, but I have to say, if your surname was Fahl, would you call your son Peter? No! <laughs> <laughs> and look, <laughs> if a child does take your fancy, please remember, <laughs> leave it a couple of years. I did. Good night. One day I want to, <laughs> but not today. <laughs> she can be kissed, but in an innocent way. And her cherry must ripen naturally. <laughs> so Simon Pegg's there again. Guitar. There's a little mate. Should I buy her with drinks? No! But not today, not even tomorrow. But maybe the day after that. 
<laughs> Do you feel children are underestimated and their power to make decisions is underestimated? Very much so. And, and, we, and yet we know from history it. that um, there was a four-year-old general at Waterloo. Absolutely. A headmaster in China who was three. Yes. I mean, we know, for example, that um, Idi Amin had a, a, a smothering, slobbering aunt. Yes, precisely. And could he say no to her? Perhaps not. I mean, if you don't make a problem out of it, then it won't become such a problem. And you won't have so many damaged people. Tete derrière. Yes, quite frankly, yes. Last night, a DJ saved my life. How? By writing this music, which contains advice on avoiding strangers. And who was the DJ? It was none other than DJ Bob Hoskins going mental in a dustbin. <laughs> Here's a quick checklist to help you spot a paedophile. And they're all taken from police reports in the last six months. If someone tells you to take your clothes off in case your thumbs get too hot. If someone shows you a model of your hometown and all the houses look like Nonsense. penises. Nonsense. <laughs> if someone thinks goldfish are the same as flatfish, no, there's something wrong. Nonsense. Put that in your ears last thing at night, because the lesson trickles in. And behavioural psychology tells us that in the morning you'll be 17.8% safer. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, please hit like, subscribe and share. And I'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>